When envisioning the solar system, we often picture a flat disk with rings symbolizing the planet's orbital motion. Having been familiar with this concept since childhood, we tend to assume that all planets share the same orbital plane and orbit the Sun in a uniform direction. However, have you ever questioned whether this alignment is mere coincidence or if there's a reason behind it? Is there any evidence of a specific process elsewhere in the universe? It turns out this alignment is not a random occurrence. The observation extends beyond planets, as regular moons orbiting planets and gas giants also follow a consistent pattern. Saturn's rings, for instance, align along the same plane as its regular moons, creating a harmonious and clockwork-like arrangement. This phenomenon is illustrated by numerous examples. To understand its origin, we must travel back billions of years before the formation of the solar system. At that time, gas and dust particles were in suspension, each resisting gravitational attraction through internal repulsive pressure. The transformational event occurred when an external energetic jolt, such as a supernova shockwave, disrupted the equilibrium within the nebula. This disturbance changed the internal pressure, causing particles to collide and form clumps. Over time, the mass and gravity of these clumps grew, gradually joining other clumps. Over several thousand years, each particle became part of these growing conglomerates. The impact of the falling matter intensified, causing the central object to heat up. As its mass and gravity increased, the object accumulated material from the nebula cloud, eventually forming what is known as a protostar, a very young star, whose core had not yet begun nuclear fusion. Initially, the material surrounding the protostar experienced gravitational forces from all directions, resulting in a chaotic environment with frequent collisions between particles. These collisions led to the cancellation of angular momentum. However, the infalling particles did not uniformly approach the protostar due to the total angular momentum of the collapsing nebula cloud. In this scenario, while particles came from various directions, the majority of their momentum was negated by particles moving in opposing directions. Consequently, what remained was the direction in which most particles were originally moving. To illustrate this concept, consider a video by Dan Burns, who utilizes a sheet of lycra to represent space-time, offering a helpful visualization. The central ball, with its significant mass, warps space-time, creating gravity, similar to how gravity operates in three-dimensional space within the universe. Balls are then thrown in both directions around the central object and orbit until colliding with another ball moving in the opposite direction, effectively cancelling out that momentum. The result is a set of balls that did not collide, all moving in the same direction. In contrast to the Lycra representation, friction wouldn't occur in space, allowing particles to continue orbiting without slowing down, as the balls do on the Lycra. Additionally, this depiction is two-dimensional, illustrating what happens on a three-dimensional plane within a four-dimensional universe. To grasp the full concept, envision these particles moving along another axis, approaching from all directions, colliding and nullifying each other's momentum until only the prevailing direction persists. As material falls into the protostar, it creates a protoplanetary disk. The angle of impacts causes the protostar to initiate rotation in the same direction. The spinning disk retains matter in orbit around the protostar, leading to the formation of clumps. If a sufficient amount of material accumulates in one clump, it may result in the formation of another star, forming a binary or multi-star system. Alternatively, these clumps may coalesce into planets, giving rise to planetary systems. Similar to protoplanetary disks, disks around planets form, causing the planets to rotate in alignment with the disk. Eventually, material in the disk coalesces to form moons. This process of material clumping is observable in contemporary times, exemplified by a prominent disk around the planet Saturn, as evidenced by the Cassini mission. During its mission, Cassini discovered small moons that formed in Saturn's rings as a result of various gravitational interactions. Some of these moons disintegrated shortly after formation, reflecting a phenomenon that probably occurred in our early solar system, while others persisted until the end of the Cassini mission. There is a possibility that these stable moons may eventually evolve into very small moons that made clear paths in Saturn's rings. Although the plane of the solar system's orbit is not perfectly flat, deviating by a few degrees for some planets, there is a definite pattern to it. It is fascinating to see how nature 
initially chaotic, eventually produces a calm and orderly structure in the solar system. This transformation occurs as asteroids and comets continue to find their place among the planets. By impacting celestial objects, the frequency of collisions has significantly diminished, evident in the substantial reduction of recorded collisions. By assessing the age of craters on unexposed celestial bodies, such as the Moon, and employing these clues, it becomes apparent that all planets underwent intense bombardment from asteroids and planetesimals during the tumultuous early stages. Frequency of collisions gradually decreased as the material organized itself. The present-day solar system reflects the outcome of this process, showcasing a reduction in chaotic collisions and the establishment of order. This natural phenomenon aligns with the concept of emergent structures through self-organization. Similar self-organizing emergent structures can be observed in various processes, such as the development of hurricanes. Emergent structures, in essence, demonstrate how randomness can lead to the formation of intricate, orderly, and captivating patterns. Self-organization is evident in celestial phenomena, manifesting in orbital planes within planetary systems, solar systems, and galaxies. This principle extends to star and planet formation, as well as the broader context of the Big Bang. The wealth of evidence suggests that similar processes likely shaped other star systems, and observations have confirmed the presence of massive planets orbiting distant stars along comparable planes. In conclusion, the alignment of all planets on the same orbital plane is a consequence of these self-organizing processes. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and sharing as it significantly contributes to supporting this channel. All the best and see you next time.